What's up, fight fans? Welcome to Triple THS. I'm the golden child, Tommy Toehold. Today, Victor gets rowdy, Eddie fights City Hall, and the Ream gets redeemed. Plus a viewer comment of the week. Let's do this shit! <laughs> Boobs! With the UFC taking a break last weekend, the ladies and Victor took center stage and brought you the Thunder, the Lightning, and the most entertaining announced crew since Don Meredith, Frank Gifford, and Howard Cosell used to get sloshed on Monday nights. It was the promotion's first attempt at pay-per-view, and so many people bought it that Ustream server said fuck being a thing that works and shut itself down to the overwhelming levels of traffic. But what a spell disaster for lesser promotions was turned into pure fucking awesome when Invictus Dana White Shannon Knapp gave everybody their money back and let people too stingy to pay the initial $8 watch the rest of the card for free. Why? Because she's Shannon fucking Knapp. Those who tuned in got to see all kinds of badass. Like Thug Rose and Pat Berry going ape shit, Gracie fighter Leslie Smith getting the breast of Raquel Pennington, and the Cookie Monster and Rowdy Beck Hyatt going at it for five rounds. The Aussie fought her ass off, but C is for takedown, and Esparza used her wrestling to get the W, despite the Rowdy one giving her the business in the closing seconds. You were cage side all night. What'd you think of the card, boss? It was like bang, pow, boom, dang of the dang of the dang. Cool sounds. I stuck around in St. Petersburg, and then wham, liver shot. Everyone was in phenomenal shape. Baby, baby. Baby, baby, oh! Godspeed and party on. I don't know what just happened. I just know that it was fucking entertaining. I'm not out of order. You're out of order. Eddie Alvarez, lightweight Bellator beast man for the past three years, is being sued and countersuing Bellator over a contract dispute. Eddie's deal with the promotion ended just recently, so he shopped around his talents. And sure enough, the UFC was interested. But, as per his contract, Bjorn and the boys were allowed to match the offer to keep the fighter. Bellator said they matched, Eddie says they didn't. So it looks like things are set to get nastier than Roy Nelson's bathroom on 25 Cent Wing Night. But there's gotta be a better solution, right? Fuck real courts and real lawyers. Let's take this thing to the people's court. This is the plaintiff. An up-and-coming fight promoter. He's suing the defendant, 29-year-old lightweight fighter, because he's not living up to a contract agreement that would keep the champ in his promotion. Plaintiff is suing for, I have no idea how much money. This is the defendant. He says he's not breaching their contract because the plaintiff didn't match the deal of a competing fight promotion. Sounds like a case of he said, he said. The defendant is countersuing for, again, I have no idea how much money. Maybe I didn't do enough research, but I couldn't find those figures anywhere. Fucking Corey's now in session or whatever. Honorable Judge Me or whatever. So Bjorn, you're suing Eddie for a breach of contract or whatever. Fucking what's up? Your Honor, I love Eddie. He's been great for the promotion. Okay. His contract is ending with us, so he was allowed to look for other promotions. But there was a clause that would allow me to match the offer of another promotion that wanted to pick him up. The UFC made an offer. I took that offer, changed the words UFC to Bellator, and then offered it to Eddie. He said the terms weren't the same. Were the fucking terms the same or whatever? No, Your Honor. We don't believe so. There's a difference of a lot of money in our eyes. Huh. So fucking you guys are saying two different things or whatever. Court will now take a quick recess while I smoke a bowl or whatever. This is Grace's Jiu-Jitsu stocking to a 9 what? <coughs> Get your horse meat ready! After a year-long layoff due to a failed TE ratio test, the demolition man's license to kick heads in has been reinstated. Last time we saw the Ream fight, he was turning Brock Lesnar's internal organs into fine sorbet and was looking set to take on the heavyweight champ. But testosterone levels higher than the 1970s Raiders tend to send up red flags, so the Ream had to patiently wait while Cain Velasquez went ape shit all over JDS's face. The Dutch giant could have done what anyone would have done with a year off, but instead he managed to stay active and has apparently put on even more muscle, if that's even possible. Reem is tentatively set to face Rockbiter from the never-ending story at UFC 156 in February. Welcome back, Alistair! Thanks. It feels good to be back. I know you're into eating horse, but I had no idea you also ride them. Oh yeah, I ride every horse that I eat. This one's name is Anastasia. You name the horses that you eat? Makes them taste better. You say so. When do you plan on eating Anastasia there? As soon as this interview's over. You're gonna eat that horse while it's alive? Makes it taste better. Okay. Word is you've actually gained muscle since your suspension. Are you worried about failing a future TE ratio test? Not at all. Yeah, and why's that? Because I ate a unicorn. And now I have magical powers. What do you mean by magical pow- Oh, I guess that's what he meant. Viewer comment time! Each week I look for heartwarming messages from you, the fans, that I can share with the world in hopes that it makes the internet a better place. This week's comment comes to us from Sian Hassan who said, Greg Jackson told me to pull out of this video. UFC 151 throwback. I will take it. That's the show, fight fans. Tune in next Wednesday when I do a firewalk with Frank Mir. Till then, follow me on Twitter for rambling subtweets to my exes. Like me on Facebook to be spammed with videos of cats playing keyboards. Check out my YouTube channel for past shows and bonus content. Be sure to visit all my awesome friends who totally train MMA, bro. For everybody Triple THS, I'm Pitt, and your ass ain't talking your way out of this shit.